I'm Leanne and welcome to this channel where we make things just because. Today I'm going to show you how I hand painted some lettering onto a plant pot with a cute slogan. So a little bit of backstory on this, I was scrolling through Pinterest and I came across this image of these really super cute slogan plant pots. Um, so I immediately zipped across to Etsy, uh, found exactly what I wanted, I was really excited, had it in my basket, ready to pay and then I noticed this, a £30 delivery charge. Now I know that the product was being shipped internationally and the product was great, but I really couldn't warrant paying £30 for delivery. So I decided that, you know, I can do that. So I got my materials together and now I'm going to show you how I did it. Here are the materials I used to complete this project. A plant pot, you can either buy one in the colour you want as your base, as I have, or you can paint it in a colour to match your theme, etc. You'll also need a printout of the slogan you're using. You will need to make sure that this will fit your pot and that the words are in the font and orientation you want. You will also need a paintbrush, some paint, I used acrylic, some tape, a pencil, some scissors and a palette. All these are basic materials that most people have at home, but there are some things you can add if you want to make the process a little bit easier, but we can discuss these later. So you'll need to make sure that your printout is going to fit on your pot, so I'm just trimming mine down to ensure that I can centre it up a little bit easier. Just keep referring to your pot to ensure that it fits and trim away as needed. This can be a little tricky with pots that are angled. If you are anything like me, you won't have a hope of getting wording on this pot that looks nice. My handwriting is terrible. So freehanding is out of the question for me, and so you need to create a transfer. This is where the fun starts. You need to make sure that you are laying down a thick layer of pencil lead on the back side of the paper, anywhere that the text appears on the front side. I did this by applying firm, even pressure and moving in different directions across the paper. The hand cramp for this part is real. This can take a little while to finish, however there are quicker options you can use such as carbon or graphite paper which will allow you to skip this step entirely and all you would need to do is simply slip the graphite paper under the printout before you begin the transfer onto the pot. Once you have created a layer of pencil on the back of the paper, it is time to stick your transfer onto the pot. This is a little tricky to line up, but the tape allows you to peel it off and reposition as needed. Looking at it straight on is easier, but I needed you guys to be able to see, so apologies for my head dipping in here. Once you have it lined up how you want, just tape it down. Now to transfer this design onto the pot, you just need to draw over the text that is written on the paper. You will need to push down quite firmly to ensure that the pencil on the back is transferred onto the pot. Don't worry too much here if you make some minor mistakes. These can be erased with a normal pencil eraser, or you can simply clean up the lines during the painting process. This again takes a little while to do, but the entire project only takes about an hour or so to do. And again, this would be quicker with the transfer paper or if you were freehanded the design straight onto the pot. So I'm just going to speed this up here for you guys to watch. Now this is where the magic happens. Once you are done, remove the paper and you'll be left with the design on the pot ready for you to paint over. As you can see, this leaves a really clear impression for you to work from. It's 
painting time! This is the hardest part of the project because the paint doesn't want to go on as smoothly as you would like it to and it would likely need more than one coat of paint. Some tips here are to water down the paint. Putting on many thinner, smoother layers of paint will look better in the end. So don't be like me and try to rush through it with really thick paint and then have to come back and give it a second coat anyway. Second, try to paint in long, smooth motions. Again, due to the thickness of my paint, I found this really difficult, um, but long, smooth motions will again make it look better. Thirdly, I actually switched out my paint for my second coat. I started with some cheap acrylic, which was fine and would have done the job, but it would have taken so many coats of paint. So for my second coat, I actually use a miniature model paint because it's what I had available at home. This worked really nicely and smoothed out the areas where, that were blotchy from the first coat. Finally, again, don't worry about making small mistakes. You can remove the paint with some nail varnish remover and a cotton bud. You can either just clean up the lines or you can remove entire parts and start painting again. Please be warned though that if you do remove entire parts that the transfer will also disappear. So I wouldn't recommend this unless you really have to. When you are done and the paint is all dried, you'll want to cover this in some sort of top coat to make it durable. I used the gloss coat because the pot was glossy when I started, but just try to match your top coat to the texture of the pot. Also, use a spray can for this. If you use a brush, you will risk wiping away the paint if it isn't quite dry. And I know I would be devastated if I got this far into a project and ruined it, so this will help you avoid that. So now let's see some beauty shots of it all finished. So that's it. Thank you for watching my video today. Um, I do a lot of these types of crafts and DIYs all of the time and I want to start sharing them with you. So if you are interested in watching more videos with crafts and DIYs and sewing, then please consider subscribing. Um, finally, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my friend who these pots were actually gifted to um, for inspiring me to do something I wouldn't ordinarily do and to think outside of the box and work outside of my comfort zone. Um, so thank you. Um, and thanks again to everyone watching. Goodbye.